Hi my scholars, this is my school channel and my name is Abiola. For this video lesson, you are going to join me to solve the Jam CBT Pass question for the subject chemistry, the year 2022. You don't want to go anywhere, stay with us and we will be right back. You are warmly welcome back to my YouTube channel. So for this video lesson, we are going to solve the questions 1 to 20. So let's begin with question number 1. So we have the subatomic particles located in the nucleus of an atom are what? Alright, so we are talking about an atom, you know, we have the nucleus where we have the proton and the neutron. Then around the nucleus, you know, we have orbits where there are electrons. So we are asked what are the contents found in the nucleus of an atom. Those include the neutron and the proton. So where do we have that combination properly? We have that in option A. So option A is the right option. Question two, we have the higher pack nomenclature of the structure above is what? Okay, so look at the structure. We have of CH3, we have carbon, we have CH2, we have CH3. So basically, you can decide to, you know, um, expand this structure properly. You know, you are going to have something like this. You are going to have your C, you know, you have your H scattered around it. You know, we have your C as well. Then you can look at this. So what you just need to do, you have to follow the, the, the basic principles, you know, attached um, regarding the uh, naming of uh, compounds like this. So if you look at this closely, if you count, right, you count close to where we have all these branches. So we have one, two. So it is actually happening on the second carbon, isn't it? So what do we have on the second carbon? We have chlorine and we have methyl. Right, so of course, how many longest carbon chain we have? One, two, three, four. So that is butane. That tells you number four but So that is butane, and you can see I can say butane in A N E because I have just a single bond. If I have a double bond, you'll be talking about butane. If I have triple bond, then just like that. So I have a single bond. That tells me that I have one, two, three, four. That is but. Right then, what? Um, uh, homologous family am I looking at? That is of course arcane because we have just single, you can see single bond. So if I count one, two, three, four, that is butane, you know, settled, then I have chlorine, I have uh, methyl. Where are they located? Of course. So they are located on number two. So definitely you are going to see two chloro, then two methyl butane. So the correct uh, interpretation or the correct nomenclature according to IUPAC for this particular diagram is located in option D. Question three. So we have um, sulfur four oxide and oxygen to give you sulfur six oxide. So if you look at this, um, we have a question right here, right? So, so we have um, in the reaction above, the most suitable catalyst is what? So we know that ordinarily this will not happen no, to yield this. So to actually get a good yield, you know, we have to make some adjustments, uh, you know, to the uh, pressure, then of course temperature. I'm looking at somewhat, um, I think from 400 uh, degrees Celsius and above right a particular range to be very uh, precise so uh, we, of course we need the catalyst you know to actually influence or affect this process and what catalyst are we looking at we are looking at catalysts like uh, your platinized asbestos or um, vanadium five oxide so we have this right here so this is the most viable option so option d is the correct option question four in the preparation of salts, all right, the method employed would depend on what. So, uh, when you are preparing salts, uh, basically, you know, for this scope, we should consider two factors. Number one, the solubility of the salt in water. Then number two, stability regarding it. So, which of these factors do we have right here? So, we have stability to, uh, to it. So, the correct option is, of course, option C. Five. The following non-metals form acidic oxides with oxygen except what? So uh, basically we are looking at um, reactions you know, involving this non-metal. So we can see that um, when they react with oxygen, what you should get should be acidic in nature. So however, the question requires that which of them has the capacity, you know, the ability to produce a non-acidic um, oxide? All right, so look at all of these, you know, look at the various kinds of um, oxide they can produce, right? Give or take, you can have um, an acidic result. However, if we come to carbon, you know, we can have carbon four oxide, 
you can see which has um, acidic property and we have carbon monoxide so that is neutral in nature so um, due to that uh, nature that we can pop out due to the results we get from reaction of carbon with this and carbon monoxide will produce you know when there's um, actually insufficient oxygen in the course of that combustion so uh, i will pick c for carbon as the most viable option six how many neutrons are present in an atom with mass number and atomic number 37 and 17 respectively so you can see we are told right here that the mass number is actually 37 right and we have um, the atomic number as 17. so recall that your mass number you know is actually a function of atomic number plus neutron number so right here we have mass number as 37 right we have your atomic number as 17 so we are looking for the neutron number so what do we do we send this outside so i have 37 minus 17 that of course will give me 20. so the neutron number is actually 20. so where do we have 20 we have option b so option b is the right option we have question seven the sulfide that is commonly used in coating electric fluorescent tubes is what okay that is actually for zinc sulfide so if you actually study about zinc you know especially zinc sulfide you realize that it has a lot of uses and um, one key um, use that we can point to you know that is quite obvious is this coating right property so the correct option is option c for zinc sulfide we strongly recommend that you have a jam cbt experience before your actual exam all you just need to do is to click on the link in the description below this is going to get you to the my school website so right there you get to download the my school mobile app for your android devices or you go for the my school software for your laptops and other computers so join me as i solve question eight an organic compound which liberates carbon dioxide from triazocarbonate for solution is likely to be what? So that is actually carboxylic acid, you know, one wonderful property of carboxylic acid. And a typical example is your ethanoic acid. So we have the chemical formula here, CH3COOH. So the correct option is option D for ethanoic acid. Please do not forget that you have to hit that like button for us. Also, click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification for you to get alerts immediately we upload the next video content just for you. Question 9. Addition of sodium chloride to water to form a solution will lead to what? So, um, no big grammatical expression here. Sodium chloride talking about your common salt. Alright, so when you have your um, common salt to water, what would it do to the water of course number one is going to cause a decrease right in the freezing point and an increase in its boiling point you know when they just take it for instance for an instance of impurity when you had impurity um, to water you know you are going to make um, the boiling point right get an increase so that's exactly what we're trying to relate here so where do we have that compilation you know decrease in the freezing point and increase in the boiling point we have the right compilation in option d so you see option d right um addition of sodium chloride to water uh, to form a solution will lead to a decrease in freezing point and increase in the boiling point so option d is the right option question number 10 a chemical widely used as a fertilizer is what okay so we are looking at um you know it can be presented to you with um, various names like um calcium ammonium nitrate um your nitro limestone you know your nitro chalk right this is a very good um, inorganic fertilizer all right your bauxite you know you're talking about limestone and other uses like that so the correct option right to the question here is option d so option d is the right option 11 on the basis of the electrochemical series which of these ions will show the greater tendency to be discharged at the cathode in an electrolytic cell all right so if you look at this electrochemical series you just all you just need to do is just look at some um, which of these ions is actually found at the bottom part you know that uh, that should have the greatest tendency you know to be discharged at the cathode all right so if you start from the top you know you are looking at um potassium followed by sodium calcium um, magnesium you know um, aluminium zinc 
right? Um, then, of course, after zinc, you have your iron, then you have your nickel, you know, you have your tin, you have your lead, you have your hydrogen, you have your copper, you know, you have your silver, then your gold. So, the lowest right there is gold, but we don't have gold right here. So, if you look at the series I just quoted, you know, the lowest right there should be your copper. You know, these guys are actually below hydrogen, you know, on that series. So, uh, the most accurate option is your copper ion. You know, so, it is actually preferentially discharged at the cathode. So, option A is the right option. 12. Addition of charcoal to the filter bed of sand doing water treatment for township supply is to do what? So, when you talk about treatment of water, you know, for town supply. Right, you can first look at um, aeration and sedimentation, you know, then you can talk about um, coagulation, where you had a calculated amount of um, potash alum, right? So there you have your sediments, you know, the sediments now formed, that is where we now have the process of filtration. So in the process of filtration, we need fine charcoal. This is where uh, we are coming at. So we have this fine charcoal, you know, the presence of this fine charcoal will actually help regarding the fine sediments, of course, you know, um, removing smell, right, unwanted um, coloring matters and the like. So the correct option is, of, of course, option C, the presence of this um, fine charcoal to remove this, right? So when it comes to the killing of germs or bacteria, you talk about chlorine, all right? Um, to prevent goiter, that's the addition of iodine. Then you, uh, to prevent um, tooth decay, tooth decay, you know, you are looking at the addition of fluorine, right? Just like we have in our toothpaste. Okay, so the correct option is option C, to remove odor. Number 13, using the metal activity series, the metal that can liberate hydrogen gas from steam is what? All right, so um, you know you have, um, we have certain metals that ordinarily they can react with cold water, you know, to liberate um, hydrogen gas, of course. But however, we have some that they will not respond to cold water, they rather respond to steam. Right, of course, when their own temperature is raised as well. So, um, looking at such metals, you know, like your magnesium, your aluminium, your zinc, and your iron, right, these are metals that will react with water, with steam to be precise, you know, to liberate hydrogen gas and, of course, form oxides of their metals. Okay, so uh, iron is the correct option here. So, if you look at copper, tin, and lead, you know, these ones do not even react with either cold water or steam. All right, so uh, to liberate hydrogen gas, of course. So the correct option is option A for iron. Question 14. An organic compound with fishy smell is likely to have a general formula of your amines, you know, option C. Right, so let's talk about amines, you know, some basic properties, you know, like um, they have fishy or foul smell, right? Um, they are polar compounds, you know, they are soluble in water, and um, they are actually bases. Right, okay, so and um, one important use, right, regarding these amines, you know, um, in making polyamines or lilacs. So, basically, where do we have that general formula? We have that with option C. So, option C is the right option. Question 15 We have this reaction, right? You can see. So, from the reaction above, which of these conditions would produce the highest equilibrium yield? right for this okay so this is this is actually a sign of reversible reaction so the favor that we are looking for is what goes back right back to the left not to the right so if you are looking for highest yield for this what you just need to do is to increase temperature you know and lower pressure and where do we have that we have that in option c however the question says what favors a good yield of this right so that will be a decrease in temperature and increase in pressure so where do we have that um, compilation we have that presented in option a so option a is the right option 16 what happens to zinc in the above reaction so look at the reaction above you know we have zinc and acid hydrochloric acid of course this is a displacement reaction you can see uh, hydrogen is actually displaced if you remember the series that we talked about earlier so when hydrogen is displaced you see liberation of hydrogen gas and formation of a salt we have a zinc salt right here so what happens to the zinc so in this reaction um, the zinc is actually the reducing agent and this is the oxidizing agent so in the whole process that tells you that um, the zinc becomes oxidized right and of course we have the other one become reduced so 
going by what I just said, what would be the correct option? The correct option is A. Now, the zinc in the above reaction becomes oxidized because it is a reducing agent. So, the correct option here is option A. 17. An organic functional group which can likely decolorize ammoniac acid nitrate is what? So, this is actually, uh, we can also refer to this as your toluene um, reagent. Okay, so what um, functional group are we looking at? You know, that is basically for akines, not just all akines, right? We are talking about the terminal akines. When they react with this, you are going to get a white PPT. So take note of the terminal akines. So the correct option is option C for akine. Do you have questions you like to ask? All you just need to do is to use the link in the description below. This is going to get you to the my school website. So right here you get to ask those questions so right now and our solution providers are going to engage you. So join me as I solve question 18. So I have a colored gas that is known to be poisonous and can readily damage the mucous lining of the lungs is the what? Chlorine gas. Alright, so uh, when you look at the chlorine gas, at first you are looking at um, the concept that is well presented here which is colored gas. So the, uh, the chlorine gas, you know, you are looking at um, greenish yellow, all right? So it has an um, unpleasant smell, right? And it's also choking, okay? So, and it's, of course, poisonous, you know, just a um, small um, concentration, small, small amount of concentration, you know, is lethal, you know, to the mucus or mucus lining of the lungs, just like we have right there. So take note of the concept, a colored gas. So if we had been given um, the concept of a colorless, odorless, gas do you see that now we would have gone for this carbon monoxide all right but however we have the concept of this you know a colored gas so the correct option is option c for chlorine do you have better steps or explanations to offer please we are so much interested all you just need to do is to use the comment section below just indicate the question number and the explanation or solutions you like to share number 19 in order to electroplate spoon with silver, the arrangement of the electrolytic cell is what? Right. So what you just need to see from here is that um, the spoon that you want to coat, right, that spoon is actually your cathode, right? Then the anode of the electrolytic cell will of course be the silver metal. In this case, we have silver represented. So we have the right compilation in option A. Question number 20. We have an organic compound which decolorizes bromine water is likely to be what? So uh, this is actually what we can tag as the electrophilic addition, right? Between alkene, right, then bromine, all right, bromine water to put. Okay, so that occurs between, uh, typically we can pick a, a thing, you know, and we have the chemical formula CNH2N. And here we have your ethene. So um, all these other ones that we have here, they're actually butane. They actually belong to the family group of arcane, right? So this is butane, uh, this is um, ethene, and this is um, propane, all right? This is actually ethene. So the reaction between ethene and bromine water, you know, it decolorizes this particular dish. So this is actually one check, you know, for double bond, right? So the correct option is option D. We've come to the end of this video lesson, but there are definitely wonderful content to come. All you just need to do is to hit that like button. Also, click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification for you to get alerts immediately we upload the next video lesson just for you.